Hello and welcome back to the Cracking Thing YouTube channel. Today we're solving lead code problem 1216, valid palindrome 3. Given a string s and an integer k, return true if s is a k palindrome. A string is a k palindrome if it can be transformed into a palindrome after removing at most k characters from it. Before we look at the example, I just want to say, if you don't know how to solve valid palindrome 2, which you probably should because this is a hard question, and if you don't know how to do the easy version, then you're not going to get this one, you should do that one first because we're going to use the logic that we use for that question in this one, which also will tie in on valid palindrome, which again, if you don't know how to solve, probably shouldn't be watching this video. Okay, so we have our input here, A, B, C, D, E, C, A, and we're told that we can remove up to two characters. So let's see, is this a palindrome on its own, right? So we have AA, so that matches, and then we have B and C. Okay, so this is a problem because obviously now it's not a palindrome, but we know that we can remove K characters. So let's greedily remove B. So whenever we see a divergence here, Essentially, what we want to do is we want to either remove the, the character on the left that we're comparing or the character on the right. We have to remove either of them and see whether or not removing left or right would create a palindrome. So let's remove the B here and now we'll get the string A, C, D, E, C, A. So we already know that the A is matched and we know that the C's will now match. So we can proceed on to the next character. So now do D and E match? No, so we can remove either of them, right? We can remove either the D or we can remove the E here. It doesn't really matter. Removing either one will create a palindrome, but since D is first, let's just remove it. Now we get the string A, C, E, oh, sorry, uh, whatever. Yeah, so we'll remove that one. So E, C, A, which is a palindrome, right? The A's match, the C's match, and then E is left in the middle, and that's fine because it's the middle character, so this is a palindrome. So what we wanna do is very similar to how we solved um, valid palindrome two, where we basically remove either the, the left pointer character or the right pointer character, except this time we can do it K times, so we essentially just have to, every time we see a divergence, we have to basically call our function recursively and um, see whether or not removing that current character at the left would make a palindrome, and then we can remove the character at the right to make a palindrome, and obviously we'll have one less deletion because we just used one, and we can do this on and on and on, and we can actually uh, memoize our solution because as you can see, now that we're calling it recursively, uh, there's gonna be a lot of duplicated work. So very high level algorithm, we're going to have two pointers, left and right, left is going to be at index zero and right is going to be the end of the string and we're going to go towards each other and compare characters uh, compare characters so if the characters don't match then we need to remove so let's see no match uh, this implies that remove uh, the left or the right character and then call our function uh, recursively um, to basically see whether or not removing the left would create a palindrome or removing the right would create a palindrome. And if so, uh, you know, then we're okay. Obviously, we're going to have some duplicated work here. So we're going to use a memo dictionary uh, to store whether or not um, we, we can form a palindrome. And the way that we're actually going to memoize this is we're going to use a tuple. And what the tuple is representing is going to be the current I position, or let's just call it the left position, the current left position, the current right position. And unfortunately, this isn't good enough. We actually need a third variable here, and we need K. And K is going to represent how many deletions we have left, because we could have L, R with only one deletion left, this is actually not the same as left, right with two deletions left because obviously maybe you need to get rid of two characters to make it a palindrome and what about with one? So we need to store the left pointer, the right pointer and K to get this. So 
That is the general algorithm. Again, pretty simple. It follows the pattern of how we solve most palindrome ones. We just need to basically call things recursively and use memo here to speed it up because otherwise it won't be accepted. So let's wipe all this away and go to the code editor and type it up. I promise you it's actually quite simple. It's just getting the solution that's a little bit tricky, but we now have the intuition. Let's code it up. Okay, so let's type this up. The first thing that we need to do is actually define a helper function, which is just going to tell us whether or not our string is a palindrome. So let us define this and we're going to say def is palindrome. And this is going to take self, it's going to take an index, and it's going to take uh, two indexes, i represents the left pointer, and j represents the current uh, right pointer. And what we're going to do is we're going to say while i less than j, this is just a standard palindrome check, we're going to say if uh, self dot string, and we'll assign string in a second, if self dot string of i does not equal to self dot string of j, um, then it's not a palindrome, and we're going to return false. Otherwise, as you know, we move i up by one, and j down by one, if the while loop breaks and we haven't returned false, then we simply return true. So we'll need this um, in our code and you'll see uh, where we need it. Okay, now we can actually code it up. The first thing we want to do is if k equals zero, that means that we're not allowed any deletions, which means that our string is only a valid palindrome if in its current form, it's a palindrome. So this is the first time we're going to use our helper function. So we're going to say if not k, so if we don't have any deletions, we're going to say return self dot is palindrome. And we are, uh, oh, sorry, we need to assign our string first. So we're going to say self dot string um, equals s. Okay, so self dot is palindrome, we're going to pass in, obviously, we want to start at the zeroth index. And we want to start um, the, the right pointer at the length of s minus one. So, you know, obviously, if we don't have any deletions, we're just going to check is it a palindrome or not, and we're done. Okay, now we need to actually do uh, some work here. So what we want to do is we want to define our memo dict, which is going to basically store um, all of our intermediate results, so we can look them up and not have to replicate ourselves on the logic front, or sorry, on the computation front. So let's define our helper function. And this is going to take a current position i, which is the left pointer, our current position j, which is the right pointer, and k, which represents the amount of deletions we have left. First thing we want to do is actually check, have we seen this combination before? So we're going to say if i, j, and k uh, are in memo, then we just want to return whatever is already cached. So we're going to return memo of i, j, k. Okay. So that is if the cache is populated. Now there's two other cases we need to do. The first case is if k actually equals zero, in which case we have no more um, uh, deletions left, which means we have to basically check, is the string from i until j, is that a palindrome? Uh, and then we'll basically return that. So we're gonna say else if not k. So again, similar to what we had in the beginning, if k equals zero at this point, um, because we've already used our deletions, then whatever is left needs to be a palindrome as it is. Otherwise, it's not a palindrome because we can't um, use it. So we're going to say memo of uh, oops, uh, i, j, k is going to equal to self dot is palindrome from i until j. So pretty simple here. Otherwise, what we're going to do is we need to actually compute whether the rest of the string is a palindrome, uh, while also taking into account that we have some deletions left. So at this point, we verified that um, we're not already, we haven't already done this. So we need to pr process it, k is not zero, which means that we need to like continue further. So we're going to say, while i is less than j, we're going to say, if the two characters, so if self dot string of i does not equal to self dot string of j, we have a divergence, right? And remember back to the example where we talked about it, you can either delete the character at i and check whether it would be a palindrome, similar to how we did in valid palindrome two, 
or you can delete the character at J and check whether doing that would make a palindrome. So we need to actually do both. So whether or not you can form a valid palindrome from I to J with K removals will actually equal what? So we'll say self.memo, oh, sorry, it's not self.memo, it's just memo, uh, memo of I, J, K is going to equal what? So we're gonna call the helper function recursively and let's remove the the left side first. So we're gonna say I plus one, so we're gonna chop the left, we're gonna pass J because J still needs to be checked, we don't get rid of that. And now we've used one deletion here, so K is minus one. So we're gonna say it's equal to this or helper of, so the I stays the same, now J needs to get moved down by one, and obviously K is still decremented. So either this will return true, or this will return true, or they'll both return false. So depending on the outcome of this, right, if this one's true but this one's false, because we have the or here, then this, this is uh, a palindrome. So this is how we're going to assign it. It's either if removing the left side would make a palindrome, or removing the right side would make a palindrome. Uh, this is what we return at this point. Now what we want to do is because, um, sorry, we want to essentially, oh, now that we've seen, sorry, that there's a divergence here, uh, we'll have called this recursively, so we can simply just return this, right? Because we don't need to process anymore, we'll already have done it in, in the child at this point. So we can simply just return memo of i, j, and k here, because the rest of the processing for this while loop will actually happen um, inside of the helper function. So we actually don't need to go any further here. Otherwise, if they continue to match, um, then we just need to move the characters. So we're gonna move the left pointer up and the right pointer up. So i gets incremented by one, j gets incremented by one. Uh, at this point, if the while loop doesn't break, um, that means that we actually found a palindrome here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna return, oh sorry, not we're gonna return, uh, we're gonna say memo of i, j, k is actually equal to true. So basically we can form a valid palindrome here um, from i to j with k removals. Um, so basically if this while loop never breaks. The last thing we need to do is remember we need to actually return our memo here because we didn't do it earlier and we haven't done it yet for this case. The only time we've done it is actually if uh, we found a palindrome up here, or we just did the processing up here, so we don't need to actually go through it again. So what we need to do now is just return memo of i, j, and k, and we should be done. Okay, so that's the helper function defined. All we need to do is actually return the helper function. We need to just return calling the helper function from zero all the way up until length of self dot string uh, minus one, because that's the last index, and k. So once we do this, it will go through the logic here and tell us whether or not we actually have a valid palindrome. So let me just clean this up a bit in case we made a mistake. Let me run this, hopefully I didn't botch anything. Okay, looks good, let's submit it, fingers crossed. This one is a bit tricky to code, and okay, accepted, perfect. All right, let's think about what the time and space complexity is. So as you can see, you know, finding a palindrome in and of itself is going to be a, what? Big O of N operation, because we have to check all the indexes. Now, the problem here is because within calling, doing our palindrome logic, we can potentially call it again with the recursive function to remove you know, either the left or the right side, we actually will end up having to process all the elements again. So because we have to basically process everything twice, it's going to be big O of N times big O of N. So for each time we're trying to find a palindrome, we may have to, again, do some extra work here um, for you know when we have to go into our recursive function to call itself. So because of this, the time complexity is actually big O big O of n squared. And for the space complexity, it's going to be the same because we need to basically store all the possible combinations of i and j and k here 
So because of this, um, this is going to be big O of n squared. So basically all the possible combinations of those two indexes we have to store in the memo dict in the worst case, and that is going to be a uh, big O of n squared. So that is how you solve valid palindrome three. Again, we used a lot of the same logic we did in valid palindrome one and two. So obviously this is how you solve valid palindrome one, pretty straightforward. And then in valid palindrome two, we saw this case where we were checking, is it a palindrome if we remove the left character or if we remove the right character? So combining the two plus some extra memoization to help take care of the fact that we can actually do K removals and not just one, we were able to solve it. Um, I think this is probably the most straightforward and like easy to understand solution because you're not doing some crazy DP. I think memoization is, it's technically, I guess, DP, but it's a lot easier to understand. And we're using the same things uh, we learned in valid palindrome one and two to basically extend it to this question uh, without some crazy like thousand IQ DP solution. I think this is probably the, the easiest solution to understand. It's obviously accepted. Um, and I mean, it's really not that hard to explain. The code is really simple to write. You don't have to be a super genius um, to figure this one out. Anyway, that's a bit of my uh, blabbering done. If you enjoyed the video, please leave it a like and a comment. It really helps the channel grow. Why not subscribe as well? Help me reach 10,000 subs. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.